Gudrun stared into the flames, watching as the fire danced. An unnamed darkness had befallen the city. The silence left by Berrigan's men lingered, plaguing Lord Lenelin with a stifled sob that no one gave name to. The old woman pulled her shawl around her shoulders, desperate to shake the chill that had crept into her core overnight. You can hug yourself in front of the fire all day long, the amber of Dagon's voice slid over her. You're not going to get rid of the chill that hunts us all. Gudrun glanced at Dagon, who wore his exhaustion in the kitchen's doorway. He had attempted to dress himself, getting as far as his muddy boots, some worn trousers, and an unkempt tunic that hung limply from his shoulders. Armed with a large flask of meat, Dagon threw back his head and gulped down three mouthfuls. Diminishing shades of red and pink, the only evidence left of the attack, trailed from his hardened face down his neck and vanished beneath his tunic. So you're awake, Gudrun said. You don't look so bad after a night's work. I could say the same for you, Dagon said, as Gudrun's chair scraped the floor. Pushing off the doorway, Dagon shuffled across the room and dropped himself into a chair that creaked beneath his weight. Moments later, Gudrun returned to the table with a small kettle of boiling water she had pulled from the fireplace. How do you feel? she asked, not bothering to look up as she poured the hot water into a cup of herbs. Don't trifle over me, woman, Dagon said from behind the flask. Your hen pecking belittles a man's honor. Oh, I'm sorry, Gudrun dropped the kettle to the table. Turn your cheek and I'll grant you a set with which to boast your endurance. Dagon grimaced and swallowed his mouthful, then omitted a sound like a half-growl, half-sigh. After a moment, he met Gudrun's eyes and furrowed his brow. You haven't slept, he said across the table. You shouldn't be up. Gudrun settled herself into the chair opposite him. His white knuckles gripped his flask as he slumped over the drink, supporting his weight on his elbows. Any news? Dagon asked. Gudrun snatched the flask from Dagon's grasp, added a liberal amount to her tea, and returned it to its owner. She rested her elbows on the table, keeping the drink just below her nose, where she could breathe in the valerian root. The firelight glistened off her silver hair. The old Sakona stared into her cup, arguing with herself over how much she would say while Dagon listened to the fire crackle. After a long sigh and sip, Gudrun spoke. Nothing new since the Dark One took her. The Dark One didn't take her, Gud Dagon said. Gudrun's cup hit the table with a cold thud. The king took her, Dagon said. Gudrun's golden eyes softened as if lost in thought, distant thought. Unable to find her way back, she took another sip, then lowered her cup to the table and folded her hands against her mouth. All right, woman, Dagon growled. Out with it! Rearing up from the tempers that would fly, Gudrun sighed. We believed the Dark One had taken her. And with all the wounded... Dagon shuffled uncomfortably in his chair. Your wounds alone are too new to go off on a blood hunt. What are you not saying, Gudrun? The old woman shook her head as firelight spilled across Dagon's scars, adding black to the streaks of red that made it look as if his face blazed with flame again. No one has left the city, she said. Not the warman, not Fakalan, no one. Dagon slammed his hands to the table and stood shaking. With the creak of the chair beneath the pound of his boot, Dagon staggered his way to the door. Dagon! The giant mop of red hair whipped about, streaking across his bearded face. Eric leapt my queen to the whim of that... that heathen! And you sit here, sipping your teas and spinning your visions! Dagon, be still, Gudrun said. I'll have his head! Dagon roared, stomping toward the door. Dagon, stop! Gudrun said. You have the sight! Dagon said. You can see! Gudrun rose to her feet, releasing a crack of say that split the air. You can see where she is, if she lives, where he has her if she's dead. Gudrun's chest steadily rose and fell with an ageless patience. The last person I know who went looking for knowledge lost an eye, she said gravely, holding his attention with a darkened gloom that bowed her. I'll give both of you my own if you can assure me she's safe. Wishes made in haste are often ill thought, she said, and settled herself back to the table. Gudrun resumed drinking her tea as if she had said nothing between them, as if he still sat nursing his need and wallowing in self-pity. The fire popped as she weighed the images that played in her mind. Twelve, twenty, two hundred times a day, Gudrun spoke low behind her cup. Some pictures as clear as you standing across the room, others faded and scrambled without placement, as if the Norns had not yet engraved them in stone. Dagon shifted himself to better stare down and wonder at Gudrun's power. Yesterday, the most faded of visions were as vibrant as they have ever been, forming a hardened ball of dread in the deepest and most reaches of my save, Gudrun said. 
Gudrun lowered her cup, looking past Dagen into the empty space behind him. Yes, I can see, she said with regret. I can see far more than I ever wanted to see, and some things not clearly enough. I can see things that at once would change them. I see things I wish I didn't see, things I can't unsee, and things better left unseen. I see enough to know that there is, that what is here is more than you or I can change. More than Kalan? Gudrun bound her head, swirling the few dregs left floating in her teeth. Look at me, Gudrun, Dagen pleaded, and tell me you wouldn't beg me for the same information if I had it. Pulling her eyes from her teeth, Gudrun studied Dagen's scarred face long before she answered. The Dark One has a bloodlust that cannot be sated, Gudrun said. His thirst runs deep. But the king... Gudrun shook her head. The king will not act quickly. Dagon heaved his breath, clearly pacifying his temper as Gudrun spoke. Circumstances have changed beyond the point of Aiden Kalan, Gudrun said. If we had gotten to her sooner, if we had swayed the tide before she was taken, we stood a chance. But by her leaving here with him, it solidified events. The Sitkona shook her head remorsefully. There's nothing to be done, Dagon, but wait for events to unfold. Swear to me, Dagon said. His fists clenched at his side. Promise me that if the tide changes again, we won't sit by while Colin dies, even if it cannot be helped. A coal popped in the earth, adding a spark of orange to the room that faded. It will change again, but where I go, I go alone, she thought. I swear it, Kudrun whispered. Slightly satisfied, Dagan looked down at his flask. Dagan let out an exhausted sigh. I will send out my own men to look. Gudrun nodded as Dagon swirled the meat in his flask. Searching the roads will at least postpone the madness that helplessness brings, he grumbled and threw back his head, polishing off the last of it.